The notion that corporations may be using technology to spy on their consumers and employees has been a prevalent topic of discussion for many years. The idea that privacy is an illusion, that what we say is in some way being monitored, either farmed for advertising data or for reasons that are kept from us, is a concern many of us in the digital age share. In 2015, a saga began which centered around a single word. A word which the mere mention of could allegedly cause accounts to be deleted, employees fired from their jobs, requiring people to discuss it using clandestine strategies in order to avoid its authoritarian detection. For this Halloween special, I'd like to offer a brief departure from many of my recent uploads, and welcome you to join Nexpo and I as we look into one of the most bizarre internet mysteries of the last few years, an algorithm known as Aratus. It was 2015. On 4chan, an Anon would make a question thread, inquiring on others' paranormal or bizarre experiences at work. The replies promptly rolled in, but for some strange reason, one would stand out among the rest. About a week after the original post, on November 26th, another Anon would pop in to make a reply outlining an experience that one of their friends had while working a box packing job for a programming company. At 1.26 a.m., this was posted. Okay, just a heads up. I'm only 20 and have only ever worked retail jobs my whole life. If I get terminology wrong, it's not because I'm bullshitting. It's because most of what she described is out of my frame of reference. I'll be honest. She's a super interesting chick. During this period, she was homeless and in a band. Her agency gave her a job at this place that was closing down all their locations in the country. And basically, it was well known that they were shady and generally treated their employees like cattle. Like they were in the process of cutting down all their full-timers to shit hours, replacing them with temps, and having the temps do the exact same work for like 10 bucks an hour. Everything was really disorganized by this point, and different departments were scattered everywhere, and they were just getting everyone to do whatever work they could give them before they'd fire them. They had a programming department that made payroll programs for other companies or something along those lines, but by the time she got there, it was literally just one dude, and they were giving him random jobs to do, like working assembly lines and running forklifts. They put her and this dude in a room, gave them a couple tape guns, and had them pack stuff in boxes. Most of the stuff there had names of their respective departments written on them in Sharpie, but hers said Eratus on it, or however it's spelled. The dude told her to get rid of the tape gun and not to mention it to any supervisors, since apparently, one of the jobs years before had been writing code to flag any employee that searched for it in their computer system. Not any old word, just that one, and they'd fire you if you got flagged. Weird shit. Seems like this could be a simple one-off situation, right? Well, not quite. About a month later, on the night of December 19th, another Anon would visit the site, inquiring on something eerily familiar to the story that we just heard. At 8.30 p.m., they ask, Did anyone here have any IT jobs on the East Coast between 2000 and 2010 or so? I ask because a few people I know from that time and area have talked about some sort of sketchy HR-related program called Erratus, and I'm wondering if I can find any info about it. Not strictly paranormal related, but disturbing, and I believe I saw someone on X mention it before, so if that Anon is here, please post. Contrary to the initial thread, this one actually did pick up direct attention, with people throwing info at the OP. About an hour after this post went live, someone jumped in, explaining that, quote, From what I understand, it was something that allowed some specific third-party company unconditional access to employee information. Employees who included it in their search terms or asked about it would get fired or placed in non-computer departments. I believe UPS, Unilever, and Ecolab were part of the system. If what this Anon is saying is true, combined with our prior knowledge on this situation, so far, we have this elusive, omnipotent entity by the name of Erratus. This Erratus thing was hardly ever, if at all, mentioned prior to December of 2015. The girl that initially mentioned this was in a band and working for a programming company. 
This has obscure, mid-2000s ties to the HR departments of various large corporations, and if anyone goes as far as to even look it up at work, they're fired. No questions asked. Now, some might hypothesize that this could be some sort of virus or Trojan horse that's strictly banned from any company computers. And to be honest, this would make sense. They tend to be taboo topics to dig into on a work computer. They're known for stealing your info in one way or another and are typically a large corporation's worst nightmare. Get one Trojan horse onto your company network and say goodbye to days, even weeks worth of productivity time as it's being repaired. Anyway, this is just one small theory off the top. What about that box though? What about OP? Where exactly does this mystery go from here? Fast forward another month and we're now in 2016. In a share thread on the music board, yet another Anon would make a reply with an obscure reference to Erratus. This time though, it wasn't a direct mention of it, but rather a song by a band named the KFC Murder Chicks. Now get this, the video that they linked took you not to their personal band accounts, but to that of a man by the name of Todd Ellsworth. Here, we're able to notice a bizarre video about a forklift, an album by a so-called DJ Roswell, and yet another by a band named the KFC Murder Chicks. Now, about their music. Yeah, it's... something. Other than that, there's really no cause for concern here. Until you read the description of the Murder Chicks video. A really good Coma Records release that seems to have disappeared from the internet. Remember to support the artist. Erratus or Rusts. Interesting. According to archives, this initially read, Erratus or Bust, but was subsequently changed. Why would this guy include this here? Notice how this video was uploaded on November 21st of 2015, before any mention of Erratus ever came to light. It's exceptionally out of place. So what are we missing here? As Nexpo illustrated, there was enough information available to spark an interest in Erratus, but not enough to form any concrete leads. The snippets of evidence for an algorithmic anomaly, as many were beginning to theorize, were tenuous and circumstantial. But this was only the beginning, and the first of many new discoveries would come only a few months after the posting of the original threads. In January of 2016, a thread was created on 4chan's music board by an anon looking to pioneer a new music genre, which they refer to as Deep Internet. The mission statement of Deep Internet was to create, quote, a subgenre of noise, found sounds, and music concrete, using super obscure, short, and or low quality YouTube videos, eschewing traditional notions of musicality. The original poster added the criteria that source videos must have fewer than 20 views. The idea was met with enthusiasm, with many users eager to participate. But once participants began watching this list of example videos the original poster provided, a portion of the discussion quickly pivoted to a specific upload. The first video was simply a commercial for a small town electronics store, nothing exciting. The second link, however, was to a video entitled, YouTube is Monitoring and Controlling My Life, by a channel named Kronos for Life Jurassic Park. One of the first things you'll notice about this video is the incredibly poor visual quality, which, granted, was part of the criteria for the deep internet music genre, but this wasn't what caught the attention of the music board. The text, superimposed over images of the film Jurassic Park, seemed to accuse YouTube of conspiring against the uploader and their mother. Although it's often too blurry and illegible to read, this anon provided a transcript. As the text explains, Kronos for Life's mother used to make videos tributing her favorite film franchise, Jurassic Park. 
but once she passed away, YouTube began removing said videos. When taking into account the paranoia Kronos for Life felt toward YouTube, it's possible the poor quality of this video was an attempt to disguise the text, making it difficult for the alleged algorithm to detect. And although this was an interesting video with many eager to watch and discuss, it was easily explained by mental illness, perhaps born out of a grief for the passing of a loved one. However, only three hours after the posting of the original thread on the music board, Kronos for Life uploaded this video. The description of this video reads, This video is mainly a test to see if it gets deleted. First time really trying to see the limits of the Erratus algorithm. If it flags this one, that's some spooky shit. Although the majority of the deep internet thread continued mining YouTube for obscure videos under 20 views with which to make music, discussion splintered off, with many eager to continue down the Erratus rabbit hole. A new thread was created dedicated to this investigation, and it was here that Anons began to search for previous mentions of the term Erratus. Naturally, they discovered the post on the paranormal board made the previous November, with the original poster being threatened into silence regarding the mysterious word written on the tape gun. They discovered the threads regarding the Human Resources program and the line erratus or bust in the description of the KFC Murder Chicks music video as Nexpo previously mentioned. But the connection between these clues ranged from thin to non-existent. What did a tape gun, hypothetical human resources software, a YouTube channel dedicated to Jurassic Park tribute videos, and a punk band all have in common? It was clear that there was still a lot of work to do before things would begin making sense. Luckily for sleuths, Kronos for Life appeared to be actively following the 4chan investigation, uploading videos in response to view spikes and providing further clues. It was safe to say there was more to be uncovered with this channel, and at least for the time being, it was the most promising area to focus investigative efforts. It wasn't long before users discovered a secret at the end of a video entitled Jurassic Park 3 Tribute. Amidst a lo-fi rendition of a popular R&B song, the trademark beeps of Morse code could be heard. Although the translation Hollywood Astral Projection Clinic provided no concrete answers and only seemed to further complicate the mystery, one important discovery was made, the date of the upload. November 21st, 2015, just five days prior to the first mention of Erratus on the paranormal board. Things were beginning to connect, albeit loosely. Answers still seemed far away, but some of the distinct markings of either an ARG or behind-the-scenes puppeteering provided incentive to keep going, to see where this all might lead. And it wouldn't be long until the next breakthrough. Days later, on January 27th, Kronos for Life uploaded a video entitled Answering Questions, in which they responded to many of the comments in their previous videos. The video opens with the following text. I've been fairly reluctant to ask anyone for help, since the nature of classic paranoid nutjob ramblings. Algorithms controlling things behind the scenes, weird stuff in that vein. In the past couple years, I've asked for help from friends in programming and business circles. But over time, friendships fade, people stop talking to you. As such, I'm very grateful for the help people are giving, and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can here. The first and arguably most pressing question Kronos answered was posed in the Here Goes Nothing video comments by user CorkTop, who asked, So, with this video, are you essentially trying to see if this system called Erratus will attempt to take down the video because it's some system, algorithm that takes videos down that, I don't know, include the term Erratus in them? Kronos' response, I don't know much about programming or computer systems, so I'm not too savvy about how to trick them. All I really know about Erratus is that it's used by dozens of companies. They seem to use it as a copyright enforcement tool, but it has its limitations and I'm fairly sure that my test video helped ferret those out. Maybe. Kronos went on to cite manufacturing companies 3M and Unilever as those who employed this algorithm, 
although to what ends they used erratus was not yet clear. But this at least seemed to explain what the word meant. Erratus was ostensibly a copyright software meant to locate and flag usages of certain words and phrases. This all seems standard and innocent enough, so why were people so afraid of it? Toward the end of the video, Kronos offered this unprompted tangent, which on the surface didn't seem to hold any meaning, but would be an important clue in getting closer to who was behind this budding mystery. The original Jurassic Park trilogy is excellent, by the way. I highly recommend it. This second film is my favorite, in spite of its flaws. Although it was common knowledge that Kronos and his late mother were obsessed with Jurassic Park, this aside still drew attention to itself due to how random it was in the context of the video. It seemed to warrant attention. While sleuths were investigating that lead, another exciting revelation was being made elsewhere on the Kronos for Life channel. Turning on automatic captions for the video titled Here Goes Nothing yielded two important discoveries. The line, overthrow the government, and an address for a location in Corbin, Kentucky. It's important to note that automatic captions aren't created by YouTubers, but are merely a product of speech recognition, causing many to wonder how these two lines of text ended up in the captions. And to further add to the mystery, once these two clues were discovered, the subtitles no longer featured them. Despite this added layer of complexity, investigations chose to, at least momentarily, focus on the clues presented. Corbin, Kentucky. What did Corbin, Kentucky have to do with Erratus? Corbin is a small town whose claim to fame is boasting the original location of Kentucky Fried Chicken, connecting Kronos for Life to the noise rock band KFC Murder Chicks. And consulting their Bandcamp page, users found their hometown listed as, you guessed it, Corbin, Kentucky. As if to further reinforce this revelation, the phrase The Lost World was discovered to be an anagram of the name Todd Ellsworth. As you'll remember Nexpo pointing out, Todd Ellsworth is the individual promoting the band's music videos. Links between clues were being formed and connections made. The path forward, at least for now, seemed to have a clear direction. But one persistent question remained. If Erratus was simply a copyright detection software used by various companies, why the paranoia? Why the secrecy? Why the cryptic clues? And just where was this all leading? KFC. Murder. Chicks. For some reason, there are too many ties here to just discount the numerous references as some sort of coincidence. January 26th. Another thread was made on the music board of 4chan, this time digging into the Erratus and the KFC murder chick situation. A day later, one Anon jumped in with a reply, explaining that they noticed in the description it says Erratus or bust, and that he was going to ask him what that meant. Oddly, soon after, it was changed to Erratus or Rusts, like we mentioned earlier. The reason behind this change is currently unclear, although, stemming from this, was a lead. The phrase, in actuality, is also the handle of a Twitter account run by Todd himself. Heading over there brings to light an entirely new arc of information into this bizarre mystery. This account was opened on November 14th, 2015, just seven days before the Murder Chicks upload on the Todd Ellsworth YouTube channel. The first post on this profile was an eerie police sketch of a 2005 Hawaiian rape suspect, and the second was a tweet about the US Postal Service being, quote, the deepest part of the deep web. During this time, simultaneously, the KFC Murder Chicks had, on their Tumblr page, made a very bizarre post outlining their reluctance on shipping physical copies of their CDs due to their lack of trust and what they referred to as a creepy postal service. Subsequently, screen caps were taken from the Ask Me Anything portion on their page, and this is where the mystery, albeit loosely, would begin to converge. In reference to the postal service remark, one user asked, What about the post office gives you the creeps? I've used it a couple years now, and they seem to be just fine. Just curious. Their response? This is probably a controversial view, but there's a lot to suggest that they're tied in with a lot of the government's more unsavory activities. Spying, profiling, general disregard for constitutional rights, 
all that fun stuff. Lots of stuff sent to us, an inordinate amount really, has never made it, and vice versa. Not to say I'm in favor of the way they got fucked over by the FedEx and UPS lobbies either, though. Now, normally I'd write this off as a simple hot take on the post office, but considering the timing here, especially in relation to the Todd Ellsworth tweet, things were becoming suspect. And so, more questions rolled in. What do you know about Erratus? Uh, like magic? Yu-Gi-Oh Erratus? We don't know what Erratus is. Please stop messaging us about it. It's getting weird. And another. Hey, big fan of your music. Quick question though. You posted a link to your album, Cortex Rampage. I got to give it a listen before it disappeared, and on the track, Get Shit Straight, you mentioned a man named Todd Ellsworth. Who is he? Thanks. To which they responded, He's fine, don't worry about it. This isn't lining up. Here, they claim that they know absolutely nothing about Aratus, but also go forth to say that the name of the one person that's repeatedly been dropping hints about exactly that is doing fine? Noted. In one last example, yet another question rolled in that inquired on the band's favorite types of movies, in which they responded with the Carnosaur series. This ended up sparking even more interest, since, as we can recall, Chronos for Life was an avid fan of the series that Carnosaur was accused of ripping off, Jurassic Park. A bit odd considering the circumstances up to this point, but another tie to Aratus nonetheless. Before we begin, it is important to understand some things. This may be something serious that involves the hiring and firing practices of some corporations. It may just be an alternate reality game or simply a series of coincidences strung together by whatever algorithms were involved. This is an ongoing community-driven investigation and therefore its validity is up to the viewer. Things went dark for a while. In March of that year, a well-respected export YouTuber by the name of Exer Herb had caught wind of this erratus thing and much like we are today, decided to do some digging of their own. Having uploaded multiple videos over the topic, it appeared that Exer was making some solid progress on this entire mystery, documenting their findings in real time. This, subsequently, would result in an odd turn of events though, as in late May, Exer would disappear from the internet. For good. No YouTube, no Twitter, no Tumblr, no online presence, zip, nada, gone. And people lost it. Considering the timing here, combined with his recent and relentless coverage of this bizarre mystery, people had begun to speculate that this was potentially the work of the Aratus entity itself. But was it? Interestingly, a few days before this sudden disappearance, People on 4chan began to speculate that Exer were the ones behind this entire mystery altogether, arguing that one of the websites that they showed in their video was one that contained a lost KFC Murder Chicks album. While a solid postulation, this was eventually found to have been discussed on 4chan a few days prior. So that theory, albeit understandable, was debunked. As of writing, only one of their erratus videos and another over a different mystery seemed to have been archived. Since their disappearance, the only real coverage about this was by a user named Toxicologist. In this upload, they discuss the odd termination of the accounts, leading some to believe that Toxicologist is actually Exer himself. Makes sense, however only one of their videos covers this, and that's it, implying that this person is being genuine here. Nonetheless, Definitively proving that these two accounts aren't one and the same is nothing short of impossible, so we're merely going off speculation. All in all, the circumstances surrounding the export, Todd Ellsworth, Jurassic Park, Kronos for Life, KFC Murder Chicks, and Exer Herb are jarring. However, there's one more instance that's had an uncanny tie to this bizarre errata situation. So let's take a look. Uh, 
As we saw with YouTuber Exerherb, coverage of this topic was potentially radioactive. What happened to Exerherb? Was he abducted by the Erratas Illuminati? Exerherb had been uploading videos consistently for nearly a year, and the notion that his coverage of Erratus would be his last before performing a deep scrub of his online presence seemed too coincidental. And when taking into account the bizarre way in which Kronos for Life communicated their concerns, censoring the word in the video description, disguising their messages in lo-fi, barely legible text, it's reasonable to assume that those who were familiar with Erratus believed it to be an algorithm of eerie sophistication. And as we learned on 4chan shortly following these new discoveries, some of the users who weren't so careful about openly discussing Erratus also began to disappear. As the popularity of the thread surrounding Erratus increased, the more taboo the subject seemed to become. Although 4chan is occasionally notorious for their uncensored and at times controversial use of free speech, it seemed there was one subject that was selectively targeted for removal. It happened so often that the term eroded was coined in order to describe this sudden and unexpected disappearance. It became pervasive enough that those who simply wanted to discuss the banned KFC murder chicks were paranoid of being deleted. Just a thought, one anon posted. Should we be backing up these threads offline just in case? I mean, if we're actually investigating this, we should be prepared for the event that it turns out to be true. Who knows how deep Aratus goes? So now the question remains, are these mysterious censorships compelling evidence for some kind of omniscient program which tracks and deletes any mention of itself? Is Aratus the Orwellian nightmare many fear? And has it infiltrated the internet to such depths that even anonymous forums are no longer safe havens? But as many of you may be wondering, if this were the case, why does a Google search for the term yield Reddit discussions, screen capped images of charts and diagrams, and pages of group attempts to solve this riddle? Wouldn't these posts also have been eroded? Given all that we know about this mystery, let's take a look at some of the leading theories surrounding Erratus and maybe we can determine what doesn't fit the evidence and what rings true. As some of you may already be speculating, there's no way Nexpo and I would risk covering this topic if we thought we could be deplatformed, and honestly, you're right. Although the theory of Aratus is an authoritarian program used by major corporations for reasons we may never know is an intriguing one, I do think we can come up with some alternate explanations. Arguably, where the saga really began to kick off was in January of 2015, with the deep internet music thread leading viewers to the discovery of Kronos for Life. This channel has repeatedly sent signals toward the noise rock band KFC Murder Chicks. Even the infamous picture posted on Ellsworth's Twitter profile is speculated to be linked to the filming of The Lost World. The linkage between Aratus and KFC Murder Chicks is perhaps the strongest out there, and our best lead for figuring out who's behind this. So, who is behind this? Although Todd Ellsworth is the name most commonly attached to this mystery, this likely isn't a real person. But there is someone I'd like to bring your attention to who not only connects with the band, but the Erratus mystery itself. In 2014, a 4chan user posted this image. And posted as a response was a trip code user who went by the name Roswell, calling dibs on the phrase to use as a band name. It's important to note that this post was made long before KFC Murder Chicks began uploading music on their band camp. And as confirmation, here we have in the album credits of the band's debut EP, producer DJ Roswell. In case you're wondering if this is the very same Roswell, here they are, under the same username, linking their SoundCloud. Okay, so what? So we found the person who coined the band name and produced portions of their music. Why should we believe this is the individual behind Aratus? Well, searching through Roswell's post history, we see that they started a thread centered around this image, which many may recognize from the original deep internet music thread. And the fact that Roswell is into the experimental noise genre, it isn't a stretch to suspect that they're perhaps the ones who started this thread in the first place, under an anonymous username. But perhaps the most compelling evidence that points to Roswell is in the lyrics of their song Need to Eat, which features the phrase Sarda Resardis. Although this is the title of a satirical novel from the 1800s, 
It's also a perfect anagram for the phrase erratus or rust. But what about the tape gun story and the mysterious human resources testimonial? Were these planted here by Roswell months before the deep internet thread in order to be found in reference back to once the Cronus for Life channel was under investigation? Well, maybe. Or perhaps these posts were completely separate, and Roswell simply saw them and decided they would make a good anchor point for a viral marketing campaign to promote their music. It's been heavily speculated by those who have followed this mystery that what we're likely seeing is an alternate reality game that, for whatever reason, failed to continue. Combing through many of the facets of Erratus, loose ends are everywhere. The Morse code of Astral Projection Clinic, this song from KFC where they attempt to reach out to Todd Ellsworth to reimburse him money. If you are Todd Ellsworth, or a relative, heir, or descendant of Todd Ellsworth, please immediately contact the bank to reclaim over $5,000 belonging to Todd Ellsworth. There were so many dead ends to Erratus that left investigators unsatisfied and confused. Could it be that this project was abandoned? That perhaps those who were behind it lost interest or underestimated how much work and planning goes into making one of these experiences? Maybe, but when searching recent discussions regarding Erratus on 4chan's Paranormal Board, we can see where the community became stuck. This video, originally titled Engineered to Deliver Flexibility, Comfort, and Productivity, was uploaded to Todd Ellsworth's YouTube channel on July of 2016. The comment section is full of desperate attempts to suss out a clue, although minimal progress has been made. Someone pointed out that searching through the metadata reveals the search terms embedded in the video, which are the Gug, Walt Disney, and Breathing. Although to what context these terms are meant to be interpreted is yet unsolved. As we've seen with this mystery, new developments are often offered once the community makes a leap forward. So perhaps Erratus isn't abandoned, only dormant with its creator or creators simply waiting for the current clues to be decoded in order to provide the next. Perhaps the only way to know for sure is to pick up the torch and continue investigating these clues and see what comes out of it. But regardless of whether the sleuth community will ever see new developments of Erratus, or if it was simply an eerie couple of months which ultimately went nowhere, it was certainly a captivating series of events which seized the attention of those of us who live for these bizarre adventures. I want to give a big thanks to Nexpo for joining me in this investigation. He's been a friend and supporter of mine since I've had fewer than a thousand subscribers. And if by chance you aren't already familiar with his work, I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and look forward to similar content, please consider subscribing. If you'd like to support the channel, a link to my Patreon can be found in the description below as well as links to my subreddit and Twitter, where you can stay up to date on channel news and participate in the discussion of past, present, and possible future videos.